Hello my friends and welcome to another City Sky- No wait, this is not another City Skylines video. Actually, this is just a video covering the mods that I use in City Skylines. Lately I've had some major technical difficulties with my computer, but now I'm back and in order to solve the issues that I had, I had to remove every mod and all other custom content that I was subscribed to on City Skylines. So basically what I'm going to do today is go through all the mods that I will use and all the mods that I need in order to play the game properly. Cause the game actually have a few game breaking things in it that really needs to be fixed. Hopefully I don't miss any mods and that I will be able to cover every mod for you. So let's get straight into it. Alright my friends, so what you can do now is just launch your City Skylines and follow along in the video to have a look at all the mods that I did use to have, links will be in the description so don't worry about that. I'm going to have short explanations for every mod and also my own personal experience with them. For example, if they are a must have mod or if they are just one of those mods that makes your life a tad bit easier. So up first we have a map, this is my favorite map of all time, this is Flatlands and this is the map that I have used for a lot of my testing. Now finally I have made my own test map, but earlier this was the one I used. So if you want you can subscribe to Flatlands or you can just stay tuned a bit and I would release my own test map very soon. So that pretty much covers the one map that I use and now we're going straight over to the mod section. And we're going to go through the top pages, because this is where you will find most of the useful mods that I use. First in the list we have the automatic builders mod. This mod automatically removes buildings that you do not want in your city. To improve the recovery time of your city and decrease the amount of micromanagement that you have to put into your game. So right now I have a example running in the background, showcasing the mod where one of my buildings burned to the ground. And in a short period of time the automatic builders mod finds the building and removes it in order for a new and healthy one to grow. This basically makes your entire city a whole lot more efficient. This is a must have mod and I pretty much wouldn't play the game without it. Next up is the all 25 areas purchasable mod. It is very self explanatory and all it does is remove the limit of the amounts of areas that you can purchase and move the limit up to 25. This is not a must have mod but it is pretty convenient and makes for a more interesting city. Also it lets you build in a wider range on every map. For example, in some maps you will not be able to build close to the sea while also building in the mountains. But with this mod, now you can. There's nothing to lose, just do it. Our third most popular mod in the community is Precision Engineering. What it does is increase and perfect the accuracy of your building while laying down roads and railroads. So what it does is provide you with the information of the angle that you are placing the current road compared to the angle of the road that you are connecting it to. It also has some neat snapping options by holding down the different keys. I can't remember exactly, but the key bindings are something like Ctrl, Shift and Alt in order to reach the different features. This is not a must have mod, but I truly recommend it and you should run with it in order to build the most beautiful, precise and symmetrical city. Next up is our tree brush mod. It gives you the tool to paint out trees by using the minus and plus symbol on your keyboard to increase slash decrease the size of the brush. This comes in handy if you want to remove big forests by right clicking or if you want to grow big forests in an instant by left clicking. I use this mod a lot in my forest file videos, so if you're curious feel free to check them out so that you can see exactly what the mod is able to do. Other than that, this mod has one limitation that I don't like and that is the fact that sometimes it has problem 
reaching small areas with trees since the density of the trees are a bit low at times. Perfect for forests though, so I do recommend this mod. Next up is the Toggle Traffic Lights mod. It basically does what the title says. It lets you toggle the traffic lights on every intersection that the game makes with roads. So for example, your two lane roads that usually does not have traffic lights, now you can add it to them if you want to do so. But what I think is the most important part of this mod is that you can now remove traffic lights from for example 4 and 6 lane roads. This is very useful because sometimes if you want like a main road going through a city and a lot of small two lane roads connecting to it, it doesn't work very good by having traffic lights at every exit or entrance. It is also not very realistic, so I would say that this is a must have mod, since it's rather hard to get some of the roads working without it. After that we have this little convenient mod that automatically adds colors to your transportation lines. Which makes it really handy in order to organize things and sometimes even make the randomness a bit pretty. For example, in my great city, Train City 3.0, it would be very hard to get everything working correctly without the mod. So check the video out and you will understand why. This is just a must have mod for me, there are no bad sides to it, so I would say just get it for the nice colors. This mod basically lets you connect railroads at sharper angles to make the traffic flow a bit better with higher speeds at intersections and a bit more realistic looking connections. This is not a must have mod, but you should definitely have a look at it. So right here we have one of my favorite mods. It provides you with a nice little panel that gives you extra information about the state of your buildings. It is very useful for when you want to upgrade your buildings to their maximum level. Because then you can just have a look on what services they are missing exactly. There is one downside to this mod that I have experienced though. And that is that sometimes the UI, the elements and the text overlap. Which makes the information unreadable. But it's still a very useful and viable mod since you could figure out most of the information by yourself by looking at the different bars underneath the text. I do recommend this mod, especially if you are new to the game. It will help you and basically guide you on what your buildings and city needs in order to grow and evolve. Next up is the last mod for today, this is the Better Builders mod. What this allows you to do is drag and select areas of which you want to remove different objects based on the options you have selected. For example, you can choose to remove just trees or props or other things. The part that I find the most useful about this mod is the tool to re remove networks. What networks stand for is basically everything in the game that transports some kind of resource. For example, water pipes, roads, railroads, which makes this mod excellent at removing for example square plots, if you for some reason were to plot them in the wrong place. Now with this mod it is an easy fix. This is basically a must have if you don't want to spend the time removing every road by hand. The only downside to this mod is if you click in the options to remove networks, and you start removing roads, it will also remove the water pipes underneath. Even if that is not what you always want to do. Other than that, I would say that this mod is a must have in order to not waste time that could be spent on more important things. I hope this video gave you some insight in the mods that I use in most of my videos and my projects in City Skylines. Feel free to leave a like or a comment on any mods that you recommend me to use. As always, have a nice day and I will see you in my next video.